right, well, hey there, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. And if you're someone who deals with mysterious symptoms like hives and flushing, headaches, brain fog, anxiety, food sensitivities, but standard allergy or blood tests keep coming back as being normal, you might be dealing with something a little bit deeper. And today I'm breaking down three related but often misunderstood topics, histamine intolerance, mast cell activation syndrome, and oxalates. Now, these conditions are tricky, often overlap, and they can disrupt your health in a big, big way. So I wanna first start with histamine intolerance, right? Histamine is a natural chemical that your body uses for things like immune response, things related to digestion, even keeping the brain alert and awake. It's also found in certain foods, especially aged, fermented, or leftover foods. Now, normally your body produces an enzyme called DAO, diamine oxidase, which helps break down histamine in the gut. But if you're not producing enough DAO, or if your body is not releasing um, uh, DAO in the proper amounts, or your body's producing too much histamine, the histamine builds up, and that's when you start to feel unwell. Now, symptoms include things like headaches and migraines, flushing or hives, especially after eating, anxiety or heart palpitations, bloating, nausea, insomnia, irritability. And again, these things can be delayed, so you may not link the symptoms to what you ate. This isn't a true allergy, it's a histamine overload. All right, so next we wanna talk about mast cell activation. Now let's talk a little bit about MCAS, right? Mast cell activation syndrome um, is when mast cells, again, part of your immune system, uh, they store, they release histamine along with many, many other types of inflammatory chemicals. But in MCAS, your mast cells become overactive and they start releasing histamine, they start releasing tryptase, they start releasing all these these chemical inflammatory mediators, right? Now this can cause, again, widespread, seemingly random symptoms. Everything from skin rashes and hives to fatigue, irritable bowel syndrome, gut issues, chemical sensitivity. But what makes MCAS tricky is that the triggers vary from person to person. For one person, it might be perfume. For another, it might be stress. Another might be food. And yes, histamine intolerance and MCAS often overlap as well. So let's talk about histamine-rich foods, right? Some of the highest offenders include things that are fermented, things like sauerkraut and kombucha and aged cheese and wines and cured meats and, and cold cuts and processed meats, leftover meats, vinegar, soy sauce, alcohol, red wine, beer, tomato, spinach, eggplants. Again, a lot of healthy foods can be high in histamine and they can trigger this release of histamine in your body, sometimes known as histamine liberators. This is why people react to bone broth or even probiotics that are technically good for you, but during a histamine flare, they cause everything to just unload. How do oxalates fit into this? Well, oxalates are naturally occurring compounds that are found in many plant foods, right? They're often praised for being healthy, but in sensitive individuals, they can also create problems. High oxalate foods are like a lot of your green spinach foods, uh, almonds, beets, sweet potatoes, dark chocolate, chia seeds. Many nuts are high in oxalates. The problem with oxalates is that they can bind to minerals like calcium and magnesium, and they can form crystals. This in turn can trigger pain, inflammation, bladder irritation, and in some cases, they can activate mast cells. So if you're dealing with MCAS or histamine intolerance, oxalates may amplify your symptoms. They can also cause or worsen issues like joint pain, vulvodynia, uh, fatigue, skin rashes. And just like histamine, oxalate symptoms can also be delayed, sometimes 24 hours or more. So what do you do about all of this? Well, first important is, is track your symptoms and the food that you're eating. Start with a food journal. Look at for patterns of high histamine, high oxalate foods. Next, you want to consider, of course, a low histamine or even a low oxalate diet, at least temporarily, just to calm down some of that inflammation and really give your body a breather. Focus on freshly cooked meats that are low histamine veggies like zucchini and carrots and cucumbers, low oxalate carbs like white rice, peeled apples, Make sure you stay hydrated, address stress, because yes, stress does cause and trigger histamine. Okay, let's talk a little bit about supportive supplementation, right? This might be things like DAO, diamine oxidase enzymes that you take with meals, vitamin C, quercetin, B6, luteolin, these things all help stabilize mast cells, and magnesium to help your body manage the oxalates and inflammation, but always work with a functional medicine practitioner because reducing histamine and oxalates too quickly can also backfire leading to a histamine dump or an oxalate dump. Now to wrap things up, histamine intolerance, MCAS and oxalates 
are often interconnected and it can all make you feel inflamed, reactive, and chemically, chronically unwell. But once you identify what your triggers are and you start to lower that load, you start to lower that burden on your body, your body can start to heal and your symptoms naturally improve. I wanna thank you for watching today's video. If it was helpful, give it a like, give it a share. And for someone who might be in desperate need of watching this information, there's a lot of videos on this topic and on this content that you'll find on my, uh, my YouTube channel. So hope you enjoyed today's video. Here's another video that I think you will really enjoy.